I'm sure many of you in healthcare have heard of something called compartment syndrome. It's where your muscles swell from pressure and it's a medical emergency. But did you know that you could develop compartment syndrome in your back? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 22-year-old man who presented to the emergency department with intractable, excruciating lower back pain. Earlier in the day, he did a lower back workout with some buddies of his. He was trying to PR. He was doing some squats as well as deadlifts. Now, he didn't have any pain while he was working out, but after a few hours, the pain became more and more intense. In fact, any movement of his back sent him over the edge. He was even having numbness on his lower back. And when he went to the bathroom, he noticed that his urine seemed really dark. This, my friends, is concerning. And many of you got the answer of rhabdomyolysis, but none of you guessed acute compartment syndrome of the lower back. And I'm not surprised because it is pretty rare. And in fact, I didn't even know it existed in the lumbar spine until I had a patient with this diagnosis a few years ago. And it's thought that many clinicians don't know about it, so it's probably underdiagnosed. So let's talk about it. Let's start with the basics. What is compartment syndrome? When pressure builds up inside of a closed muscle compartment, all of our muscles in our body are bound with something called fascia. It's a thick tissue that bounds our muscle fibers together. Think of it like the coating or the covering of your muscles. It's a tough fibrous connective tissue, so it does provide a closed space for the muscle. So if you have something in a confined space and it starts to swell, there's nowhere for it to go. The pressure builds up inside of this fascia and the blood can't flow through the muscle itself. That deprives the muscle of oxygen and nutrients that it needs. That can lead to muscle damage, nerve damage if the nerve runs through the muscle, and if not treated quickly enough, the muscle itself can actually die and you can have loss of function of that muscle forever. Acute compartment syndrome is a medical emergency for that very reason. If you've ever worked in trauma or in orthopedics, you've probably heard it and seen it. It can happen in fractures and crush injuries, even constrictive dressings or casts. The symptoms of compartment syndrome are usually identified by the five P's. It's a little mnemonic that we have in medicine to help us remember these symptoms. The first P is for pain, and pain is usually out of proportion. It's excruciating. The second P is for paresthesias or tingling because the nerve isn't communicating and therefore you can get tingling in that area. Basically, the nerve is getting pinched off by the pressure in the muscle. The third P is for pallor. That means an unhealthy pale appearance and that's because blood flow to the area is reduced. Fourth P is for paralysis and that means the muscle doesn't move. And the last P is for pulselessness and that is a late sign. That means you have lost a pulse to that muscle because the muscle has swollen so much that there is no more blood flow to that area. We diagnose compartment syndrome by measuring the pressure in the affected muscle. Once we diagnose compartment syndrome, we want to allow room for that muscle to swell. So a surgical procedure called a fasciotomy in which we release the muscle fascia to allow that muscle room to swell. So let's get back to our patient. How do you develop compartment syndrome of the lower back? Because most of you guys have never heard of that before. You see, our back is full of many different muscle groups, and each one of these muscles is covered in fascia. Here is a cross section of the spine, and you can see each one of these muscle groups of the lumbar spine and each one of these is coated in fascia. And here is the same representation of what each muscle group looks like on the MRI. Now I want you to ingrain this picture of what muscle looks like on an MRI in your brain. This is a healthy, thick, paraspinal muscle. We engage the muscles in our lower back when we do back extension. So since our patient was really working very strenuous and doing many deadlifts for a PR, he was putting his back extensor muscles in overdrive. And here is the MRI that was done and you can see this normal, healthy looking muscle here on the left side. And then on the right side, you see this pale looking multifidus and erector spinae muscle. This muscle is actively ischemic from compartment syndrome. Now, why did I say that his urine was dark? 
Your interns dark in compartment syndrome due to a condition called rhabdomyolysis, which many of you guys got that answer. When the muscle is damaged, the muscle cells break open, spilling their contents into the bloodstream. And one of those key substances that's released during muscle breakdown is something called myoglobin. It's a dark red protein that carries oxygen in the muscle. The kidneys will filter out the myoglobin, but it will be excreted in the urine causing this discoloration and in high amounts myoglobin can be toxic to the kidneys and can even result in kidney failure and it's not just about the color of the urine this is also a medical emergency because you need to hydrate your kidneys to help flush this out to prevent damage to those kidneys and sometimes even dialysis is needed so dark urine and compartment syndrome is a red flag for rhabdomyolysis. Now I mentioned that in his laboratory studies, his creatinine kinase was elevated. That is an enzyme that's found in muscle cells. And when you see it elevated in the blood, it usually means that there is an extreme breakdown of muscle. And in the context of compartment syndrome, your CK levels will rise. It's one of the earliest and most sensitive markers of muscle breakdown. So what do we do in our patient? He is having active back pain, muscle breakdown, and rhabdomyolysis due to this ischemia of his back muscle. Definitely want to hydrate with IV fluids to help flush out that myoglobin urea and prevent any kidney damage from occurring. That will help the kidneys, but to save the muscle, you have to perform something called a fasciotomy. But doctor, the erector spinae is a really long muscle in the lower back. You're exactly right, and a fasciotomy is no joke. So fasciotomy incisions for the lower back would be a really long incision. But if you don't do it, the muscle will die and the patient will no longer have support on that side of their spine. And if it's on both sides, they could potentially lose bilateral support to their spine. That can lead to chronic back pain and ongoing issues with the spine itself because it doesn't have any support. And here is a picture of what that would look like if the patient did not receive surgical treatment for their compartment syndrome. That entire muscle group would eventually die. So our patient underwent emergent fasciotomy for his lumbar compartment syndrome and he did really well after the surgery. And the pain was almost instantly gone after the fasciotomy was performed. Some tips to avoid compartment syndrome is you want to avoid extreme overexertion of those lower back muscles. Go slow. When you're training your posterior chain, build up your intensity slow. Lumbar compartment syndrome usually develops after sudden intense exertion in people that usually don't train those back muscles. Staying hydrated will help support healthy muscle metabolism, rest and recovery, allow your muscles time to heal. And most importantly, this video is meant for awareness of this condition. Early identification means early treatment. Early treatment means less risk of irreversible damage. So remember, compartment syndrome can happen not just in your arms or legs, but it can happen in your back. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.